Hello, Georgia. Oh, hi, Annette. Um, today, Tunisia's 56th anniversary of being a republic has been marred by yet another political assassination. Also, Togo's parliamentary elections pass off relatively peacefully, and Mali's year of turbulence has shaken up both buyers and small businesses. First protests broke out in central Tunis today, the 56th anniversary of the Republic, after a leading critic of the ruling Islamist Inada party was riddled by a hail of bullets outside of his home in the capital this morning. Member of Parliament Mohamed Brahmi was the second Tunisian opposition politician to be assassinated this year after Shokri Belaid's death back in February. Brahmi's family is amongst those pointing the finger of blame at Inada, something it strongly denies. His death has prompted calls for a general strike on Friday, and thousands have also taken to the streets in his hometown of Sidi Bouzid. Nicolas Germain has more. The two men on this picture have now been assassinated. Mohamed Brahmi on the left was shot dead this Thursday. Shokri Belaid suffered the same fate in February. The two members of the Tunisian opposition were both left-wing and both highly critical of Inarda, the ruling Islamist party. Brahmi's family accused Inarda, led by Rashid Renouchi, of being responsible for his murder. The Islamists strongly rejected the accusation. Mohamed Brahmi was born in Sidi Bouzid. That's where Mohamed Bouazizi set himself alight in December 2010. It's often considered as the starting point of the Tunisian revolution, which in turn inspired the other revolts of the Arab Spring. Under the regime of strongman Ben Ali, Brahmi was arrested twice. He created a clandestine movement called the Union of Nasserists. After the fall of Ben Ali, he launched his own political party. Mohamed Brahmi was 58 and had five children. The president of the National Constituent Assembly declared Friday a day of national mourning. Well, we'll be speaking to our correspondent in Tunis a little later on in the bulletin, so do stay with us for that. But now, after months of delays, Togo has finally held its parliamentary elections. Today's polls are an important step in the country's transition to democracy since the military installed Four Nasingbe as president back in 2005. Up until then, his father had ruled since 1967, following one of Africa's first coups. The opposition hopes today's vote will help loosen the Nasingbe's family's influence ahead of the 2015 presidential election. Voting does seem to have gone relatively peacefully today, although small protests broke out in Lome after authorities shut down a radio station, reportedly for accusing the ruling UNIR party of cheating. Well, our correspondent, Silvio Combe, was there when Legend FM was taken off the airways. He joins us now. Silvio, what happened today? Um, yes, actually, you know, uh, today, uh, you know, Togolese went to cast ballot, and uh, there was this uh, public radio station that's called Legend FM, uh, who was having uh, a show, and there was a certain problem during the process. Uh, but then uh, it went to a moment when the, uh, the policeman came around and, and to seize all their materials uh, and, and told the journalists to, I mean, to leave the, uh, uh, um, uh, the radio station. And, 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 um, and the population went uh, later on on demonstration uh, to ask uh, for the radio to restart working. And uh, we have noticed the uh, arrival of, of the Bishop uh, Bariga, who is the president of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, he did a mediation to make the radio uh, restart working. And now, actually, they are working, but they are just playing music. And this lasted about, about more than five hours in Lomé. OK, thanks very much. Silvio Combe there in Lomé, Togo, on the day the country holds its parliamentary elections. Now, Malians are also hoping for a fresh start with presidential elections that are due to be held on Sunday. It's been a tough 16 months. The country imploded last year after a coup snowballed into an Islamist invasion that forced hundreds of thousands of people from their homes. Well, the turbulence has also hit buyers and businesses hard. Shop number 124 in the Bamako New Market is where residents go to buy basic goods. The rice purchased here is grown in Niono in northern Mali. This shop owner has been waiting for hours for his first customers, of which there are fewer and fewer. The reason? Costs have soared. When there's no war, there are a lot of people, and a kilo costs 325 to 350 CFA francs. But because of the war, prices have gone up. Today, that same kilo costs 400 CFA francs. Beans are another food staple in Mali. 
but people are learning to go without. Its price has risen by about 20 percent. So has that of fish. Both the war and the political crisis have driven up the price of staple products. Purchasing power in Malian households has dropped considerably. This has had a disastrous effect on local businesses. Suleiman breeds and sells sheep. Today, he has sold five, too few compared to last year. Because of the war, nobody has money. We used to travel all the way to Timbuktu. But with the war, no one traveled. There's no money. With three days to go before the presidential elections, Malians are appealing to the 27 candidates to take the matter in hand and bring down prices. The failure to do so will sabotage efforts to revive Mali's stricken economy. In South Africa, a man due in court today on over 820 charges of rape, robbery and kidnapping was found hanged in his cell in Johannesburg this morning. 42-year-old Sifiso Mahuba was accused of raping 34 children and two adults and infecting them with HIV. His youngest alleged victim was 10 years old. Okay, we return now to our top story. Tunisia was set to celebrate its 56th year of being a republic, but there's tension and widespread anger instead following the gunning down of an opposition politician, Mohamed Brahmi. It's a second, second political assassination this year. Our correspondent, Eileen Byrne, is in Tunis. She joins us now. Eileen, first Shokri Belaid, now Brahmi. Why are opposition figures being killed in Tunisia? Yes, this is the question that Tunisians are asking themselves this evening. There's two basic theories. The simple one is religious extremists. Um, both the slain politicians belong to small leftist parties who, in provincial towns especially, have been clashing with more extreme fringe uh, Salafist elements in those provincial towns. The, the more complicated possible theory, and one which has been alluded to increasingly this week, is that there's, a, whether it's extremists being manipulated, that there's some further agenda to put the Tunisian demo, transition to democracy off course. Now, is this likely to happen, even if there is a theory that somebody's trying to uh, destabilize the country, that's something that Anada subscribed to? Um, is it likely that the country would, will be able to tip back into instability, particularly bearing in mind what's happening in Egypt? Yes, there's now the question of the Egyptian scenario. Tomorrow is going to be a big day in Egypt. Um, Tunisia is a much smaller country from Egypt and it's a very different country. And my feeling is that, especially with the assassination in February of Shokri Belaid, that's when it passed the danger point. I don't think the mood on the streets now is, is going to um, produce mass demonstrations, very huge ones such as we've seen in Egypt. Thanks very much. Eileen Byrne there for us in Tunis. Now, one of Zimbabwe's leading musicians, Chiwaniso Mare, has died aged 37. She passed away in a hospital near Harare on Wednesday night, shortly after having been admitted. Mare reportedly succumbed to pneumonia. She was born in the US, the daughter of acclaimed musician Dumisani Mare, before she moved to Zimbabwe in 1988 and played in family bands. She mastered the imbira or thumb piano, but performed, tra performed traditional music with a twist. The thumb piano is usually only played by men, and she gained a cult following combining African and urban sounds. A couple of moments to listen to the sounds of Tunisia. Well, that pretty much wraps up African News for now, but I will be back with more in an hour. Thank you so much. That's Georgia Carvin-Smith from our Africa desk. But do stay with us because coming up at the top of the hour will be Mark Owen with more news and headlines.